Good morning. Good morning. The St. Regis Parish Faith Community gathers for the liturgical celebration of the fourth Sunday in the Easter season. We ask you to fully participate in the liturgy as a community by praying and singing together. The second collection is for the Religious Education Fund. There are several announcements. The Knights of Columbus are having their famous Mother's Day breakfast today after Mass in the cafeteria. Bring mom or grandma to the cafeteria for a delicious breakfast served by the Knights. Confirmation will be this Thursday, May 16th at 7 p.m. at St. Barbara's Church in Harrison City. There will be confirmation practice for all candidates and sponsors this Wednesday, May 15th at St. Barbara's Church at 7 p.m. All candidates and sponsors must attend. Our Women's Faith Sharing Group will meet for the last time before the summer break this Monday at 6.30 p.m. Our topic will be the Corporal and Spiritual Works of Mercy. All women age 18 and older are invited to join the discussion and prayer. That's Women's Faith Sharing Group this Monday at 6.30 p.m. The Evangelization Committee will meet Wednesday at 6.30 p.m. Potluck dinner and square dance demo after Saturday, 5 p.m. Mass next week. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. And a happy Mother's Day to all of our moms. 
And let's take a moment to stand welcoming one another in the Lord's peace at this time. Let's take a moment to open our books to our opening hymn, 908, Festival Canticle, 908. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God our Father, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with each of you. As we begin our prayer today, we remember all of our moms living and deceased, we remember all of our parishioners, and we pray that we be willing to do what the Lord asks of us. And for those times that we have failed through human weakness, we acknowledge our failures and ask for the Lord's mercy and forgiveness. Lord Jesus, you are our good shepherd. Lord have, Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you call us to listen to your voice. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you offer us eternal life. Lord have, mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us all to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless 
Almighty, ever-living God, lead us to a share in the joys of heaven, so that the humble flock may reach where the brave shepherd has gone before. He lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Paul and Barnabas continued on from Perga and reached Antioch in Pisidia. On the Sabbath, they entered the synagogue and took their seats. Many Jews and worshipers who were converts to Judaism followed Paul and Barnabas, who spoke to them and urged them to remain faithful to the grace of God. On the following Sabbath, almost the whole city gathered to hear the word of the Lord. When the Jews saw the crowds, they were filled with jealousy and with violent abuse contradicted what Paul said. Both Paul and Barnabas spoke out boldly and said, It was necessary that the word of God be spoken to you first, but since you reject it, and condemn yourselves as unworthy of eternal life, we now turn to the Gentiles, for so the Lord has commanded us. I have made you a light to the Gentiles, that you may be an instrument of salvation to the ends of the earth. The Gentiles were delighted when they heard this and glorified the word of the Lord. All who were destined for eternal life came to believe, and the word of the Lord continued to spread through the whole region. The Jews, however, incited the women of prominence who were worshipers and the leading men of the city, stirred up a persecution against Paul and Barnabas, and expelled them from their territory. So they shook the dust from their feet in protest against them and went to Iconium. The disciples were filled with joy and the Holy Spirit. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice. Oh. 
A reading from the book of Revelation. I, John, had a vision of a great multitude, which no one could count, from every nation, race, people, and tongue. They stood before the throne and before the Lamb, wearing white robes and holding palm branches in their hands. Then one of the elders said to me, These are the ones who have survived the great the time of great distress. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. For this reason, they stand before God's throne and worship Him day and night in His temple. The one who sits on the throne will shelter them. They will not hunger or thirst anymore, nor will the sun or any heat strike them. For the Lamb who is in the center of the throne, will shepherd them and lead them to springs of life-giving water. And God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. The word of the Lord. sisters, may the Lord be with each of you. And, and now let us listen attentively to a reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said, my sheep hear my voice. I know them and they follow me. I give them eternal life and they shall never perish. No one can take them out of my hand. My father who has given them to me is greater than all and no one can take them out of the Father's hand. The Father and I are one. The Gospel of the Lord. Well, first of all, thank you for carrying on a tradition that's been part of St. Regis for quite a few years, the mother-daughter 
uh, choir for Mother's Day, uh, doing a wonderful job, and I think it's grown a little bit over the years, so thank you for being here. Happy Mother's Day, and to Florence for organizing this, thank you very much. Today, throughout the church, is known as Good Shepherd Sunday. Um, fourth Sunday of Easter has traditionally been that, and it doesn't matter which liturgical cycle we are in, the readings all lend themselves to the idea of Jesus being the Good Shepherd. And most of us are aware that sheep are not the brightest of animals. Um, when left to their own, they wander off and run the risk of getting lost or hurt or something. Uh, if they see a bush that looks a little bit attractive and it happens to have some thorns and brambles in it, it'll get in there, get hooked up with all the wool, and it doesn't know how to back up. And that's one of the reasons why when you see pictures of the shepherd or bishops who are the shepherd of the flock, the staff or the crozier has that hook on the end so that when one of their sheep does get stu stuck in a bush, the shepherd just reaches in and the hook of the staff, they catch it around the neck and gently tug it out. Hopefully the animal gets the message and begins to back up with the staff. And we might think that it's kind of odd that Jesus would compare us to such stupid animals. But you know, when we start to think of it, I'll be the first one to say, and I'll be re uh, quoting St. Paul, why is it that I do the things I do that I know I shouldn't, and why is it I don't do the things that I know I should do? And I think most of us are right that way at the end of the day when we are examining our consciences. We just stop and think, man, I had that opportunity, I could have done this or I could have done that, and I just shrugged it off. And so Jesus realizes that many times, like the sheep, we can wander off and run the risk of becoming lost. So he's going to always be there to try to keep pulling us back, pulling us back on the right track. Jesus does say in the gospel that uh, no one can take them out of his hand. That is interesting. We may say, well, the devil. But you see, we have a free will. And with that free will, we can choose if we want to follow God or if we want to follow the devil. The devil, tries he may, can keep trying to trick us and pull us and everything. And as long as we exercise our free will and choose to do good, we're not going to run the risk of following his devices. And so, literally, if we end up out of the flock, it's by our own choosing. We chose, because of our free will, to go the wrong way. But, by the grace of God and the love of God, even when we make that mistake because of our human weakness and go the way of Satan's temptations, God is so good in his love and mercy for us that he gave us the sacrament of reconciliation. He is always calling us back, calling us back. We know from one of the other gospel stories that if there's a hundred sheep and one of them strays, what's Jesus going to do? What's the shepherd going to go and do? He's going to leave those 99 that are safe alone for a while and go out searching, trying to pull that one sheep back. And so also with us. And sometimes God uses family members. Sometimes God uses uh, friends, co-workers, whatever. God is always going to be working to pull us back so that not a soul is lost. So the reality of our faith and free will is that we must allow God to find us. And that is one of the ways, or that is one of the reasons why we need to recognize the voice of the Lord. Some time ago, I was reading an account of um, shepherding over in Europe, where it's still very highly practiced. And when the shepherd wants to call one of his sheep, 
Some of the sheep may have a name, like Fluffy or whatever, I don't know. But anyhow, most of the sheep are called by a particular whistle. And so this sheep would have one whistle, this one would have a different sound of a whistle, and this one. And when the shepherd sounds a particular whistling sound, the sheep that is trained with it knows to come to the shepherd and the others stay behind until they are called. That's how God knows each of us. And the only way we're going to know the voice of our shepherd is if we stay in touch with him on a regular basis through daily prayer and reflection and meditation. And so today, as we celebrate Good Shepherd Sunday, we thank the good Lord for his concern about each of us. And we just pray that we always be willing to follow where he leads Sometimes it's going to be a little bit difficult, but he's going to always hold on to us, making sure that we make it safely to what he has prepared for each of us. Moms are a lot of like shepherds in raising their kids. Well, dads are too, and we'll be talking about the dads next month on Father's Day, but today's all about moms. And you got a big responsibility. Before coming over this morning, I was reading a little bit about this morning's paper front page, God love his family in North Huntington. Uh, the dad of this family is an identical twin, and him and his wife had twins, and recently they just had triplets. And I think some of you already read that, so man, they got an instant family in a tiny little house, and she was reflecting, you know, the difficulty of trying to give each of the kids equal attention, and sometimes that's not always possible. But in addition to the equal attention, steering them and helping them to learn the difference between right and wrong, good and evil. And so moms, I commend you, you got your hands full with us. If you had me, um, and if my mom was still living, she'd be the first to admit she had her hands full with me. But by the grace of God and my mom, we made it through safely. So today for Mother's Day, we are honoring you and we got something a little bit different this year. It is a sun catcher. Uh, the only thing I'm disappointed, it didn't come with a little suction cup to stick on your window or mirror, but I'm sure you're creative enough through the years that you'll figure out how to hang it somewhere. But it says, Mother, with a verse from the book of Proverbs, her children arise up and call her blessed. And so each of you will be getting this. Uh, and when the kids really get on your nerves, don't throw this little bag away. When the kids get on your nerves, I mean, it works really great. So uh, you get a double present today. So uh, you liked that, didn't you? I did too. I'm saving them. Any of the ones that are left over, I'm saving the bag. So uh, I'll be driving everybody upstairs a little bit bonkers uh, in the coming days. We're going to have a prayer for our moms and uh, have a great day. I was asking the servers in a sacristy what uh, they got their moms and come, came up with some interesting gifts. So, uh, shows that everybody is thinking. Uh, just stay seated for right now, and then I'm going to give directions for the distribution of the gifts. We pray for our mothers who have given us life and love, that we may show them reverence and love. We pray for moms who have lost a child through death, and that their faith may give them hope, and their family and friends support and console them. We pray for our moms who have died, that God may bring them into the eternal joy of his kingdom. Let us pray. Lord God, as a mother gives life and nourishment to her children, so also you watch over your church. We ask that you bless these women so that they may be strengthened as Christian mothers. Let the example of their faith and love shine forth and grant that we, their sons and daughters, may honor them always with a spirit of profound respect. Grant this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation. He came down from heaven. 
and by the Holy Spirit was of the Virgin Mary, and he became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and he is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray. The response is, Risen Lord, hear our prayer. For missionaries in the church, may God protect and guide them. May we continually pray for their success in spreading the gospel of Jesus Christ. We pray, Risen, risen Lord, Lord, hear, hear our, prayer. our prayer. For mothers and those who have been like mothers to us, may they always be remembered and blessed as models of love, nurture, and family. We pray, Risen Lord, the Lord, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For our children who receive First Communion and our teens who are receiving confirmation this week, may the sacraments they receive give them the grace they need to stay close to God in their lives. We pray, Risen the Lord, Lord, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For those who are called to be priests from our own parish, may they overcome doubt and fear and respond with courage to God's call. We pray, risen, risen Lord, Lord, hear our, our prayer. For the faithful departed, may they join the angels and saints in heaven, singing God's praises. We pray, risen, risen Lord, Lord, hear our, our prayer. During this Mass, we remember in a particular way living and deceased mothers. We pray, risen, risen Lord, Lord, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For the prayers we hold deep in our hearts, which we now pause to add. We pray. Risen Lord, hear our prayer. For the safety of our men and women in the armed services, we pray. Risen Lord, hear our prayer. And for, those, uh, for our Jewish brothers and sisters, that peace be restored to their homeland, we pray. Good loving God, as we come before you this day, we give you thanks for all the many ways you share your love with us, and now ask that you hear and answer our prayers in your infinite wisdom. We also pray, Lord, that amidst all the temptations of the world, we always strive to hold on to you and your word alone, so that we can see ourselves safely through this world into the next. And we make this prayer in your holy name and united with the name of Mary. Amen. Amen.